What's up folks, I'm Ali, and today we're gonna be learning how to test a hot swap PCB for a keyboard. This is the very first thing you should be doing, whether it's a hot swap PCB or a solder PCB. Hot swap PCBs are just more prone to issues by, by their nature. The vast majority of vendors are not gonna give you a return or an RMA if you email them about a faulty PCB if you didn't test it before assembly. And that's because during assembly is when most user error occurs. Now this doesn't take long. You'll, you probably have the items needed to test it around your house already and it could save you a big headache down the road. Let's take a moment here just to go a little bit more into detail into why you wanna test a hot swap PCB is the very first thing when you get it. One of the most common ways that people damage their hot swap PCB is when they're inserting their switches. If you don't get those two metal contact points aligned and inserted just right, you'll end up putting pressure on the hot swap socket itself. This can lead to the hot swap socket popping off the back, which can be a real pain in the ass to fix. Testing a PCB before assembly assures you know whether or not your PCB arrived damaged or if you're actually the cause of the break. The best part about testing a hot swap PCB is you don't need any fancy tools, right? You're gonna have most of this laying around the house already, but I'll have some links in the description below for some of the stuff I use as well. First thing you're gonna need, of course, is your PCB. This is the Bastion TKL PCB, and I've already tested this when I first got it because it's been a while since I'm actually gonna work on this project, and I wanna make sure that I'm not outside of that you know, usual 30-day or 14-day uh, return period. Then you're gonna want an anti-static sheet. This is the pouch that already came, that the PCB came in, and so it's already anti-static, and it's also already gonna be the right size. But again, I'll link to some other anti-static sheets down below. Then you're gonna need a uh, cable that works with your PCB. Most PCBs these days use a USB-A to USB, ooh, let's get it out, USB-C cable. And if you don't, if one didn't come with your keyboard and you don't feel like purchasing another one, if you have one that you use to charge your phone or your mouse, that's gonna work as well, provided data can come through it. And then the last thing you're gonna need is a set of tweezers. This is just from my iFixit kit. I'll link that down below as well for you if you wanna pick one up. And this you're gonna actually use to actuate the, the hot swap socket and actually simulate pressing a key switch without needing to insert a switch, which would defeat the purpose of testing. All right, now that we've got everything we need for testing, let's actually look at the programs that we're gonna be using for testing because you got a couple of different options there. All right, so you're gonna have a couple of different options when it comes to which software to use to test your PCB, right? First, we'll cover proprietary software, right? Proprietary software is when it's specifically made by the manufacturer of your keyboard or your PCB, and there's no way I can cover all of those. So you just wanna check what came within your package or on their Discord server or on their website, and they'll be able to walk you through it. But you can follow along here. The testing steps are pretty much gonna be identical for you. The second option is via or via, and that I'll have the link down in the description below for you. It's just usevia.app. And this is the software that a lot of the more custom builds, you know, your group buys, your pre-orders are gonna be using. And this is the one I'm gonna be walking through today for you. But then you always have a default of keyboardtester.com. And so this is a great set piece of software. And let me actually refresh this here for you so you can see what it looks like when you first land on the page. You do actually have to click on launch tester here. No, I don't want any of those ads, right? And again, one of the reasons why I try to avoid the site if I can, but it's still a great resource. But one issue here is, right, my regular keys go fine, but then if I use something like an alt key or anything else that's considered a browser shortcut, my browser takes over. For example, let me test my alt key here. And yeah, it fired off for a second, but now you can see it selected my uh, Chrome menu up here. And if I hit more keys, like I'm hitting my D key right now, it's not entering. I have to refocus in order for that D key to work. So your options are proprietary software, useviaapp or keyboardtester.com. Let's get right into testing. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is get your station ready. I've got my main keyboard out of the way, small Gox 7V Flex, um, and I always keep a keyboard plugged in just in case you need to be typing anything like pulling up use via or pulling up um, keyboardtester.com. And again, we're gonna be using via here for our testing. 
and all you want to do, and this is the Bastion TKL. I have it upside down on the anti-static material so that the hot swap sockets are facing up. Put that down on the material, plug in your cable, and then you're going to want to go into VIA and hit Authorize Device, pick the name of your PCB, and hit Connect. Now with some keyboards, you'll need to actually go into Settings, enable the Designs tab, then go into Design and load your JSON file. For the Bastion TKL, I don't need to do that, so I'm going to turn all that off. And then once it's recognized and authorized, you just go to the stethoscope, stethoscope, I'm having trouble pronouncing words these days, and you open up the test matrix. And what that does is it will mirror what your actual keyboard layout is, and you want to have your keyboard sounds on so you have a little bit of feedback on what's happening. And so first I'm going to do a little switch, and then I'm going to zoom in, a little test. So we're just activating the switches, and you can see here on VIA that they're being activated. One thing to keep in mind is since your PCB is upside down, you're going to be testing from left to right, but on the screen it's going to be going from right to left. All right? And let me zoom in here on the actual socket itself, and what I'm testing is I'm always doing it from the outside. And you, very gentle, you don't need to use any force. You don't want to test on the inside there because your tweezers can actually damage those little leaves and then you're actually causing more damage. And so you just want to test on the outside, make sure your tweezers are set to default to be wide enough and then just go along. And you just want to do that all the way through. And if you run into an issue, you want to then check to make sure, like say if this D key here wasn't firing off correctly, right? I would look and examine the PCB itself and then also make sure my configure tab that that button is actually set or that key is actually set um, to something that can activate because some keys will have trouble activating. I think Vi is uh, taking care of most of that though. And that's all you need to do is just go across your entire PCB until everything's purple and you know that your PCB is ready to build and yet you didn't get a faulty unit. And there you have it. It really is that easy to test your keyboard hot swap PCB before assembly. Now, if you run into any keys not firing, right, make sure in VIA that it's actually programmed and bound to something that should be firing off and then visually inspect the socket. If you still have issues, contact your vendor. Don't try to fix anything, especially with a solder and iron or anything like that, before you contact your vendor, because then you're going to void your warranty and it defeats the purpose of testing your PCB in the first place. Now, this video is going to live on keebtools.com slash tutorials. Keebtools is a website that I built where you can browse through community keyboard builds as well as reviews of keyboard company vendors, and you can post your own builds and post your own reviews. You can check that out at keebtools.com. I'm Ollie Beans. I'll see you in the next video. Be good to each other.